Thank you. I'm honored to introduce our first speaker, Bishop Frank J. Duane, who serves as the spiritual leader of more than 250,000 Catholics in 10 county dioceses of Venice, Florida. Bishop Duane was appointed by Pope Den Benedict XVI in 2006 as the second bishop of the diocese. In addition, Bishop Duane currently serves on the Pontifical Council for Coronum, the Board of Directors for Catholic Relief Services, the Holy Land Foundation, Board of Directors, the USCCB Committee on International Justice and Peace, and along with numerous other appointments. Prior to being ordained as Bishop of the Diocese of Venice, Bishop Duane serves as the Undersecretary for Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace, which promotes justice, peace, development, and human rights worldwide. He has experienced defending freedom and justice on the local, national, and international level. We're excited to have him speak here to us. Please welcome Bishop Frank Duane. Thank you all very much. Scripture has a phrase that says, it is good that we are gathered here together. And certainly it is good that we are joined here today in unity with others from around the nation in support for the most cherished freedom of this great nation, religious freedom. Some of you attended the Sarasota Religious Rally, Freedom Rally in March. And I want to shout out to all of you and give you a thank you for having driven that long distance and being there. Several of you identified yourselves today. I thank you very much for that March meeting. But to all of you who are gathered here today, thank you for your presence. Uh, some people said, oh, you won't have many people. Everybody's gone. It's the summer. Look around, folks. We're here. I just want to say, as Catholics, Protestants, and Jews, we stand together in opposition to the health and human services mandate that marginalizes, yes, marginalizes religious institutions and religious people. Just because we have, there is a political agenda that maybe is unacceptable, an agenda that is imposed by intrusive government. This mandate, HHS mandate, is so offensive and so coercive that it resembles similar actions that totalitarian regimes have used in the past. I myself lived for five years in what was then the Soviet Union. I know what a government looks like when they try and control religious freedom. I don't like it. I lived with it once. I don't want to live with it again. Yeah. Yeah. Some, and we see it all the time in the press, some will want to call these rallies a fight against contraceptive or against a woman's health. Those people are missing the point entirely. This is about a flagrant violation of God-given right, a God-given right to religious freedom. This is, this is about the sacred right of any faith community to define its own teaching and its ministry. In a very real way, this is also more than just religious freedom, my friends. We are defending our very identity, each one of us here. We are defending who we are, who we are to serve. We must fight this attack on our identity. We have no crisis of identity as to who we are, and others must hear that. I don't know how many of you know some of the intricate points in this whole law, but do you know that because, and listen to this one, because we serve, educate, and care for people, people of other faiths than we might be, the government is now saying that we are not religious enough. No one looks to the fact that whether it's Catholic Charities or the Jewish Family Assistance Program, Lutheran Aid, whatever it is, None of them define themselves that they will help only their own. We reach out to all who are in need. And now the government says, oh, wait a minute, you can't do that. You can only help your own. I don't think the Bible said just help your own. It tells us to reach out to everyone. We obviously, 
we obviously will not and cannot abandon our obligation to help all of God's children. But this example sheds light on the strangling definition, and I repeat it, strangling definition of religion and religious activity that the government has forced upon this nation in our time. It is our obligation and is a duty to all and to our God that as we go forward, we are not to contradict our faith. Our government should support who we are. Then we can no longer, if it goes forward as it is now written in law, we can no longer claim to be a land of the free and a beacon of hope for the rest of the world. We have, will have become like so many others. I ask you at this time, do you find that this mandate is acceptable? No! no. Are you a second-class citizen? No! Do you have second-class rights? No! Then be ready to stand firm against injustice. Yes. And, and be ready to have your voice heard, not just here in Naples, not just in our diocese. All of us must stand throughout the nation. Let us speak out. All people, all people and all peoples have the right to live out their faith in the public square. And in America, this is done with the protection of the First Amendment. Not the Fifth, not the Tenth, or whatever. The First Amendment. What will this nation become if people are forced to hide their religious faith or violate their own convictions in order to obey government dictates? Ladies and gentlemen, when one freedom becomes uprooted by a government, the public has every reason to fear what can come next. If this mandate stands, it will set a precedent that the next generation must live with. And with the First Amendment being so callously disregarded, we must ask, will they have the ability, that is future generations, your children, your grandchildren, will they have the ability to rally together at all? Let's hope so. But our rights and freedoms, as well as our future, depend upon our voices, our voices today, and voices like yours. It will take the voices of all people of goodwill, chanting in unison for religious freedom to be restored. Let me once again thank you for being here today, all of you. It takes courage and sacrifice to stand up for what you believe, and for that, you should be proud. Regardless of what faith you profess, it is important that we continue standing together in unity under the banner of religious freedom. Thank you, and God bless you all for being here.